Next on American Movie Classics, James Gleason and Helen Broderick are on the scene to solve a wealthy woman's murder in Murder on a Bridal Path. Next on AMC. Where's Addie? Weren't you supposed to pick her up? Nothing's happened to her, I hope. Addie Ross left town this morning. What happens when the town flirt writes to Jean Crane and Southern and Linda Darnell that she's run off with one of their husbands? Well, if that's her idea of a joke, she's extremely poor taste. I'm going to catch up with that. War of the Spouses. I'm fed up with Addie Ross. Kirk Douglas co-stars in the Oscar-winning A Letter to Three Wives. Wednesday on American Movie Classics. Gary Cooper stars as a good man who has it all. But to Geraldine Fitzgerald, having it all was not enough. I've wasted my life. I've wasted my life on a failure. Are you trying to say that you've had affairs with other men? Yes, I have. Where does a good man go when his life is crumbling? I can't give you up. Gary Cooper stars in 10 North Frederick. Friday on American Movie Classics. <laughs> Somewhere. The mystique of France, the pride of Spain, and the splendor of Mexico come alive in the classic screen version of Hemingway's intimate profile of a lost generation. Tyrone Power, Ava Gardner, Eddie Albert, and Errol Flynn star in The Sun Also Rises. Sunday on American Movie Classics. Next on American Movie Classics, a young boy is lured into a world of crime in the heart-wrenching classic, Are These Our Children? Next on American Movie Classics. Beginning in December, AMC doubles the excitement with terrific movies and great original programming. Now, 24 hours a day. Bing Crosby leads an all-star cast in a story of theater world romance featuring the classic music of Cole Porter in Anything Goes. You're the top. You're the Coliseum. Bing's back again. This time he joins legendary performers Kate Smith, Cap Calloway, George Burns, and Greg. New York movies on December 24th and 25th. This is how it was in my dream. Oh, it's wonderful. And when you're talking New York, you're talking Big Apple, the greatest city of them all. New York, New York, you high and mighty, bright and shiny, fabulous place, New York. The excitement never stops. <laughs> Colorful characters abound. Ah, shut up, you pasty face halloopers. Romance is always in fashion. I mean it, I tell you. Just as soon as we get home, I never want to see and just as towns and cities all over America turn sentimental for the holidays, so does the Big Apple, proving that big places can have big hearts. At Christmas time, there's something swell about the spirit of Christmas, to see what it does to people, all kinds of people. Now, why can't that spirit last the whole year round? Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, George! Merry Christmas, George! So top off your holiday with some of our best-loved New York classics. The Christmas in New York Festival, on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, only on AMC. Round the Clock Classics, now 24 hours a day. Next on AMC, good guy Tim Holt sets out to capture a female Robin Hood in the Western adventure, Come On Danger, co-starring Francis Neal. Next on AMC. Well, what specifically are you after, Mr. Conroy? Everything illegal, bookies, slot machines, graft, corruption. The city has become infested with crime again. It'll be our job to wipe it out. Edmund O'Brien is the prosecuting attorney. William Holden is the investigative reporter. Uh, you got into a crime wave. Should make quite a story. It uh, has a twist to it. Alexis Smith is the woman they both love. There's a gun on me. Get away and keep in the crowd. American Movie Classics presents a gripping story of corruption. The Turning Point, Friday. Coming soon on AMC.
chords. The thing is that an awful lot of them, as the decades go by, get away from the original recipients who die and into the hands of heirs or friends who don't care as much about them as the original recipient did. And when they find out that their Oscars were five, ten, twenty, or fifty thousand dollars, there's a great pressure on them to sell. Needless to say, the Academy frowns upon the buying and selling of Oscars. In fact, it's taken Malcolm Willits to court trying to stop him. The Academy likens the Oscar to a kind of Medal of Honor. It calls Oscar auctioning a deplorable practice. Sooner or later, that Oscar has to get into the used memorabilia market. I mean, we're talking about decades, centuries. And for the Academy to say they can never be sold, well, it just, it just isn't realistic. If all this seems disrespectful to Oscar, Malcolm Willits begs to differ. Well, I say no, because we have found these Oscars being used as doorstops. We have found them in unclaimed storage auctions. We have found them in pawn shops and in garage sales. Now, that's not treating the Oscar figure with respect. They say something is worth what people are willing to pay for it. Only with Oscar, the artist pays with a performance, the movie fan with a credit card. For the man who saved his lunch money to go to the movies, that's the American way. <laughs> I like to think so. For AMC in Hollywood, I'm Peter Jones. The Spanish Main was the first color film RKO made under its new agreement with Technicolor. Early in 1944, another deal was uh, brewing at the studio. In the spring of that year, Maureen O'Hara had signed a contract with uh, both RKO and 20th Century Fox. And while she would remain primarily a Fox star, the deal called for her to make one picture per year for RKO. But before she could begin work on that new contract, there was another little matter that needed some attention. At the time she signed the contract, she was six months pregnant, and she was not about to go to work until her daughter was born. Well, when Broen Bridget Price arrived on June 30th, O'Hara announced that she wanted to have five more kids and said anybody who would give up her home for a career is just crazy. Things certainly do change, don't they? Of course, talk like that made strong studio executives weak in the knees. I mean, somehow, O'Hara never got around to having the other five children, and within months after the baby's birth, she was on the set of the film we're about to see called The Spanish Main. In the role of the swashbuckling pirate, RKO cast Paul Heinrich. Remembering his cosmopolitan performance as Ingrid Bergman's husband in Casablanca and that suave romanticism in the car with Betty Davis when he lit the two cigarettes in Now Voyager, kind of hard to imagine him grabbing a sword and defending his ship, but that's what he does, and he does it well. Walter Slezak is at his sleaziest as the villain. Here they all are in the Spanish main. Not only did the hero get the girl in the Spanish main, but the studio got the money. This movie earned $185,000, making it one of RKO's top grossing films for the year 45. It was such a success that another film of the same formula was inevitable. The follow-up was called Sinbad the Sailor. Maureen O'Hara and Walter Slezak were back on board the ship, and my good friend Douglas Fairbanks Jr. was there doing the honors as the hero, and boy was he great in that film. I loved it. That doesn't eliminate Paul Heinrich as a terrific swashbuckler, by the way. His latent pirate talents having been discovered, he went on to star in films like The Last of the Buccaneers, Thief of Damascus, uh, Siren of Baghdad, and The Pirates of Tripoli. Maureen O'Hara didn't end her days aboard a pirate ship either with the Spanish Main or a Sinbad the Sailor. Uh, she went on to do Tripoli and then Against All Flags, in which she stripped away her ladylike demeanor and became a pirate herself. Why not? Now let's look at this. Next on American Movie Classics, it's adventure on the high seas as a pirate captain raids a ship full of children. Anthony Quinn and James Coburn star in A High Wind in Jamaica. It's next on American Movie Classics. In January, AMC rings in the new year with a legendary lineup of classic movies, beginning with a salute to Hollywood's all-time king of comedy, Charlie Chaplin. In the gold rush, the little tramp braves the Yukon in search of gold. Get out. Get out. It's Chaplin versus technology in the immortal comedian's final silent movie, Modern Times. And Chaplin's talking this time and gives a brilliant dual role performance in The Great Dictator. Hey, the strap is, isn't it? 
Also in January, AMC launches Creepy Classics, a weekly series of classic horror. The series kicks off with one of the greatest fright films of all time, Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi in his most legendary performance. Children of the night. What music they make. AMC offers a double dose of high tension in January. First with Richard Widmark's chilling portrayal of a psychopathic killer in Kiss of Death. And Robert Evans reprises the murderous role in the 1958 remake of Kiss of Death, The Fiend Who Walked the West, co-starring Hugh O'Brien. Maybe I'd better give you a little hot leg first. It won't be so active. Action lovers will have a field day in January as AMC presents the thrill minute movies of director William Wild Bill Wellman. Gregory Peck and Richard Widmark are robbers on the run in the desert drama, Yellow Sky. It just happens that votes don't mean a thing. If you want to get rid of me, you've got to run me out. An Air Force flight school provides the backdrop for action and romance in Wellman's Thunderbirds, starring Gene Tierney and Preston Foster. You can talk to yourself for a while. I'm going for a little And Henry Fonda stars in Wellman's superb study of the terrors of mob rule, the Oxbow Incident. These fellows will go a long way to get the guy to kill Larry Kincaid. Ring in the new year with Round the Clock Classics all through January, only on AMC. The Orpheum Theater on Broadway in downtown Los Angeles. The audience arrives as it has most every night since this great theater opened in 1926. Jack Benny was the headliner that opening night. He was paid the still hefty sum of $5,000 for a week's work. These days, audiences come to the Orpheum Theater to see Tom Cruise or Clint Eastwood, but not tonight. Tonight is about honoring two legends, one long since departed, the other just about ready to perform. Silent movies were never silent. There was always some music describing, in musical terms, what's happening on the screen. And it seems there has always been Gaylord Carter. For seven decades, he's been known as the sound of the silence. It's my job to underscore and, uh, and punctuate and bridge what's happening without getting in the way. Carter knows an audience's reaction to what it sees has a lot to do with what it hears. That's why he previews all his films before showtime. Because I don't want to be caught to uh, be surprised if a, a fist comes in and hits somebody and knocks them off and, uh, and, and I don't know what's coming. No one knew the importance of timing better than Charlie Chaplin, who often composed the music to accompany his films. Everything he did can be easily have music going along with because he was thinking in musical terms while he was doing the action. I never did know him. I never did really meet him, but I was very close to him because I was an usher for the Philharmonic uh, uh, Orchestra in, when I was going to high school, and I used to escort Charlie Chaplin to his box. Gaylord Carter plays on the same instrument he played when the Orpheum opened in 1926. A lot of theater organs have found homes in pizza parlors and restaurants and, and garages and barns, but uh, here's where they're supposed to be heard. Gaylord Carter still gets fan mail, usually from people in their 80s and 90s. What pleases this 83-year-old most? Another generation that cares. It's an old art form, old, 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 old. But when I do this in schools and colleges, which I occasionally do, the kids are so amazed that anything as old as the silent movies and theater organ still has so, so, so much impact and vitality. <laughs> of my age has arthritis or something, but my fingers are still limber, and I think that's because I've been using them for so long and so, so actively. <laughs> well, I tell you, somebody was asking me the other day exactly what is it that you do, and I said, creative self-expression. That's what I'm trying to do. For AMC in Hollywood, I'm Peter Jones. You're watching AMC. Mayor Rossi presents the key of office to Donna Macy and Loretta Young, their mayor and assistant mayor for a day. Coming behind them is Daryl Zanuck, producer for 20th Century Fox. 
Stars are glittering a whole constellation from Hollywood. Among them, Sonia Haney. Here for the premiere of the story of Alexander Graham Bell, of which Mayor Don Amici and Assistant Mayor Loretta Young at that giant telephone are the stars. Film calling the outing at the Golden Gate Exposition, Tyrion Power and Annabella. There honors the stars at the Treasure Island premiere of their latest picture. Coming soon on AMC.